What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Herman Hesse and today we're gonna talk about remix packs. The easiest way you can do it, how to send it and other things you have to think about. Okay, with that said, let's roll the intro and let's check it out. So right guys, as I already mentioned, today we're gonna talk about remix packs. So in which situations does like does it occur that you need a remix pack? So usually when uh, you want a friend of your of, of yourself to remix a track for you just for fun, for I don't know because you like him, because you like his sound, or for whatever reason, or if maybe a label a label says to you, man, we need your stamps, your samples to get a remix pack for a bigger artist to remix your track so that um, your track get a better exposure because the main idea behind like a remix is obviously to uh, get a bigger audience because every artist brings an own audience with him his followers his fans so if a bigger artist remix a song for you and then pushes it to his audience he will say hey look out guys i made a remix for herman hesse feel free to check out dp and obviously those guys won't only listen to him to see won't only listen to his remix but will also listen to your original so uh this is the idea behind of it and it's quite yeah quite common nowadays i mean remixes has been done past already i don't know since the ages of music <laughs> so um, a remix is always a good thing uh, to plan so I'm gonna tell you all the steps you could do if you like and this could be pretty helpful I mean I had I had uh, to learn it all by myself by you know the last three years working with labels and sending them <laughs> trying remix packs and stuff and then telling me no this is wrong we can't work this and so much so I, do, I don't want you to waste your time just uh, stick around till the end and hope you you'll get uh, out a lot of value of the video so anyways enough talking we're gonna jump right into the door let's check out the stuff that i prepared for you all right so now we're here inside ableton this is uh, a track that i released on imt which was produced with purpose for imt i'm gonna display it to you real quick As may some of you recognize it is code v uh it is uh, you know released like three weeks ago on spotify and now like one week on uh beatport it's now for exclusive on sale there so if you want go check it out on spotify or if you want to support me feel free to support myself as an artist by buying it on beatport i really appreciate your ongoing support thank you very much guys but today we are not here for talking about this so what you need within a remix pack is not to, you know, send these whole tracks as stems or maybe as a final mix to the artist because the others need samples to work with, you know, as more samples you send him, he has more stuff to pick, to choose and to create his unique style. It does make no sense at all to send like the full WAF mix. There's so much uh, things inside it. I mean, uh, here we have like... 37 audio tracks but uh, there are also tracks of mine which have like up to 60 audio tracks so uh, if you think about it there are maybe i don't know 30 audio tracks in like one bit or sample of a second this is just simply not possible to cut out all the parts you have like heads like kicks drums i don't know the melody vocals so sending the artist a remix pack with only samples is the best way to go so that the other artist has the best options to make a great remix out of your track which will you know have a bigger impact obviously on the ep itself on the release and so on so the things you want to do first of all we make a new project okay we're gonna make uh, we're gonna save it i call it remix pack 
So, um, one thing that you can normally delete is like the kick. Usually every own artist makes his own kick, so it is okay to send, you know, a remix pack without a kick. I mean, you can do it, it is up to you, but all the remix packs I got were usually all without a kick. Anyway, you know, the kick is like <laughs> the own child of every producer in the techno genre, so <laughs> I can understand because um, everyone works so hard to get like this perfect techno kick, everyone wants to make it, so uh, it is usually okay to just delete it and, you know, send all the other stuff like that. So. Then, the thing that we're gonna need, obviously, is to remove all the groups. I mean, in this case, you can also leave it as a group because the right are not in interacting with each other. This, like every right, has its own space, so we can leave it like this. Then, obviously, all the melodies and stuff, we have to ungroup it because we, we need to send, you know, as much as we can of the stem or of the sample so that the other artists can work with it yeah this is every set okay then maybe the fx you don't need to send it because normally every on others has like his own fx library but you can do it anyways uh we're gonna do it for for this purpose okay all right one two three four all right and background this is like sort of usually stuff that i record myself like you know when i'm out every time i'm i'm on a vacation or every time i'm visiting another place like last year i've been to amsterdam or uh, at awakenings festival so i took my recorder with me and every time i hear something interesting just pop the recorder out record it and you're done and so over the years i made like an entire library just of ambience recording just to fill out some you know at the end and and inside the breaks and in the intro and outro usually i put it like there so this just a little production tip on the side um this is like my sidechain trigger so you can delete this channel too and then when you finally got all your main channels if i can say it like that you're gonna proceed by drying out all the stuff all right so all this sense I made up you're gonna delete this because you don't need this okay and then you have to go group by group deleting all the fx and for this now this is really important i hope you saved the project save a copy of your project don't ruin your first project all right keep that in mind um i will now continue by you know deleting all the stuff we don't need compressor eqs blah 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 all the stuff we don't want just simply delete it and after I'm done, I'm gonna come back to you and explain you the first steps you have to do. All right. So yeah, one thing that I mentioned uh, is here the main melody breakup. I call it main melody one, but it is basically a fizzy, phasey pad sound that I made. Um, I think it was with Serum, I don't know, I, I can't remember. But basically I, I tried to save some CPU, so I rendered it out and uh, then I got this, got some phasey uh, automations and stuff and some saturation and so on. And at the end I got a filter on here. So the only thing you want to delete is basically the last filter that I already deleted. Sorry for that. But all this phasey texture and stuff in EQ and compressor, usually you, you want to leave it like this and don't want to delete this because these effects are what are giving these, the sample, the sound and its characteristics. So in this case, you don't want to delete everything on this chain, but you want to leave it so that the remixing artist got this particular sound or this pad and can work with this. And you don't want to change the sound. I mean, at the end, the remix has to be a little bit close. Or, I mean, yeah, it don't has to, but it's cool if a remix is close um, to the original and you can hear, okay, this is, you can hear the original parts in the remix itself. So keep that in mind. It's like you have to choose and say whether, yeah, this is important or no, this is not important. And then choose if you have to delete plugins and effect chains or you don't have. But with FX Sense, as I mentioned previously, this 
as you can see, I already deleted everything. You can delete this because you don't need this, like reverb, delay and stuff, filters. This is stuff. If they are not giving the sound a specific characteristic, delete it. It has nothing to do with it. All right, I'm going to continue deleting all the unnecessary stuff and come back to you in a minute. So, right guys, now that we are finally finished with deleting all the FX and SandFX and all the other stuff, everything that we don't need that is not uh, giving the sound a particular shape, we can continue by rendering out all the sounds as stems. This is the next step. Uh, and by doing this, you can do this on your Mac by holding Shift, Command and R. Otherwise, another thing that you can do is go here. Tatein, sorry, I got it in German. <laughs> um, export audio and video clip. It's the same, basically. Um, we are going with WAF, obviously, because we want the remixer. You can choose you from WAF, Ike, and Flak. As you want the artist to make a high quality remix of yourself, you want to stick around with lossless formats so that your samples are really top notch quality. Bits, you are going best with 24 bits. So bits is basically the information that this sound is using. So um, how can I compare it? Like 16 bits is for old school CDs. CD type air, if you remember it, like this DVD style round. So this is basically a way to shorten up the amount of data in the sound to get it more on the CD, so you don't need this nowadays. 32 bits is like really too high and would enlarge your sounds and, and samples in a really crazy amount. So best thing to do is stick around 24 bits and option no dither. Dithering option is also for uh, CD mastering. So it's like kind of bringing said in a really really simple way it's like kind of, of bringing uh, all the stuff and gluing it all together it's adding like a, so a texture sound like some kind of artifacts and obviously you don't want this artifacts to be inside your samples because you want as clean samples as possible so leave the dither as no dither really important then we're gonna hear about the choosing section um we're gonna rendering start zero 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 and this is the rendering length. One thing that you can do that is really handy that I usually do is, you know, put this bar up on side from front to back. Then when you click on this and everything is selected, you can go shift command R. And as you can see, the rendering length is automatically chosen as all length of your project. Um, you're gonna send to nur alle Einzelspuren, which is basically every single um, audio track individual. So it won't render out only the master, like this, this is only the master channel. This is useful when you're doing a mix down. But in our case, we're gonna go with every audio channel sing singular. So this is perfectly fine. Now that we have everything sorted out, we go to export. You know, inside uh, the really folder, I go with this folder. Now, just paste like a spacebar. If you have something in here, just delete it so that the uh, Ableton will know to, you know, put in the name that you already gave to your project file, your different audio tracks, and it would put it in there. So now we're gonna uh, export it, and we'll see us back in a bit. All right. So now that we are finished here, we can go by hitting Command N if you're using Mac to open up a new project. Now switching over to this one, we are gonna here select all our stems by collecting all these different audio tracks, putting it inside your DAW. You're gonna usually get only one one audio track, but by hitting Command. You will display it everyone as a single audio track and put it automatically there so you have everything lined up as you need it. So next thing that we're gonna do now is go and shorten up everything we need. No, we don't. And you're gonna do this 
for every single audio track. I'm gonna here and short this up like this. Okay. I'm gonna hit Command J and consolidate. The next thing is the breaks up. Also here. This part is basically the same, but you can leave it if you want and hit Command J. So now for the drop bass, we're gonna hit Command E to cut it in three pieces. Shorten up this bad boy, Command E. Okay, again, and this you can shorten up like this. Perfect. Now you can just add those three. Select all together. Command J. Let's go. This is the drop bass. Perfect. The hats, you can obviously shorten it up as much as you want. Best thing to go is like, I don't know, a loop of, uh, let's say, eight, eight bars. Yeah, this is the hat, so leave it like that. So in this case, this melody, I already recorded it, you know, like in a really early stage of uh, the production. And to save out some CPU, I render it out with the filters, with the sidechain compression and all the stuff. So in this case, there is not much to do. I really would leave it like this so that the remixing artist has, you know, can choose his parts where he wants to pick it from. And again, here with the perks, you can cut out all the stuff you don't need. You will save the remix pack some some storage, you will save yourself time. You know, all the stems is like a, a lot of data to send. So it is pretty helpful like that. Right, same as with the shaker. In this case, I would leave it like this and only use the first part. I know that here every ride is um, playing. So as you can hear. Perfect. This is the sustained filter. Let's give it a listen. Yeah, this is basically this phasey pad sound that is in, on, in the background of the track and keeps it driving and has like some sort of filling effect and some sort of like I don't know how to say it, technoid, phasey, crazy, you know, sound you're in the club and hearing this and you go out of sight of your mind. Yeah, this was the planned effect behind this. For this, it's like the same as with the main melody. We're gonna leave it as much there as possible uh, so that the remixing artist can choose his favorite part. But we're gonna delete all the stuff we don't need. Just, you know, select the section, go with delete and up for it then put it together all in one yes hit come on j let's go consolidate and then the so once you've done you're gonna ha select shift command r as we already know go to export create a new folder call it imt remix i don't know pack hammond Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. You just have to find it. Then, same here. Go with the spacebar, but only apply this if you already labeled and named every one of your audio tracks. Okay, this is really important. You have to name those first so that the remixing artist can see it. I mean, he, he can hear it, but it will uh, fasten up the process a little bit also for him. Okay, let's secure this. I'm going to be back in a while as soon as all the samples are ready. So now that our samples are ready, the next thing we are going to do is this one. I'm going to paste it over here. And as you can see, you have like all the samples inside of here. Then we're going to cut out all the things we don't need. This is like the master chain and the two reverb, uh, reverb, and the two send and return channels, which I accidentally didn't delete in the first place. So get rid of those. And now you have all the things you need. Uh, let's go check it out. Make a quick test. Yeah. 
perfectly. That's fine. So the next thing you're going to do is to on Mac, you can compress this stuff and make like a zip folder of it. Uh, if you have a Windows PC, you need like something like WinZip or something like that to really compress the sounds. You have not to do this, but it's like a uh, extra layer of security that your sounds going to be intact, uh, arriving to the person you need. As I said, you don't need to do this, but it's like a little bit of security is going to save up you some time. You're going to compress this and once you've compressed it, as you can see, it's already one uh, gigabyte of file. So by mentioning this, the next thing you can do is obviously not sending this as an email because it doesn't make sense. Like with this big amount of files, to send out an email so you can send it now via every uh, single cloud format you want to do. You can go with Dropbox, um, you can go with I don't know, iCloud, wherever you want to do, upload it to um, this cloud and then you're going to paste the link to the label so they have the link and can send it to the other artist. He can then download the tracks uh, within the time he want to take. Uh, if you don't have any cloud based service, um, I mean, this happens, uh, clouds always cost a little bit of money. Like I think Dropbox is like 10 euro in, in a month. and Google Drive is like free up to five gigabyte. I don't know. I can't remember, but you have like some free send services. You can go the best one I choose to send like small things is WeTransfer. You hop up over WeTransfer. You're going to add some uh, data. I'm going to choose the remix pack, obviously, with the samples. And uh, then you can choose between uh, get the link or either send an email so you can uh, when you send the email you can directly pass the email and also a little message display but we're gonna go with links so you're very much variable with uh where you're gonna post this link uh then go get the link and i'm gonna come back to you as soon as it's uploaded so now that we're done uh you get here the link uh, that you can send now over to the label. You just click on it and it's directly pasted or, and, and it's directly copied. Um, so you can go and paste it over your favorite messenger. You can choose maybe Facebook Messenger if you already are writing with the label owner or you can just simply um, send an email or maybe, I don't know, WhatsApp, whatever service you, you want to use. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today. All right, guys, thank you very much for sticking around till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video and the content on this channel. If you do so, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or maybe also comment if you have any questions about this topic or maybe another topic. So let me know down below what you think and what you're thinking in general about this channel. And yeah, I'm really curious to hear about your opinion. So with that said, wish you all a great day. See you very soon. Bye.